In the headlines, gunmen kill 34 people in Benue State internally displaced persons camp. Flood prone community in Kano cries out for help ahead of rainy season. Two more bodies recovered from Bayelsa boat accident. And lastly, on the international scene, hundreds of Moroccans protest to show support for Palestine. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Updates. I am Martia Umar. Thank you for joining. And now the news in detail. Gunmen on Friday night killed 34 people in an attack on an in internally displaced persons camp at LGEA Primary School in Ban in Niv Council Ward of Guma local government area of Benue State. A resident simply identified as Jonah told newsmen that armed men attacked the community around 9 p.m. on Friday. He said a pregnant woman and her son were among those killed while several others were injured. The security advisor of Goma local government's cancer, Christopher Waku, said 34 people were killed while over 40 others were injured. Waku disclosed that those killed were displaced from their various ancestral homes and were taken refuge at a classroom in the LGEA Ngban primary school and please a public relations officer for Benway command Catherine and Nene confirmed the incident the Zamfara state's police command has confirmed the abduction of children and women in Wenzame village of South local government area of the state the command in a statement on Friday said a joint tactical team had been deployed to rescue the victims safely armed gang had raided a farm in Wenzame a community in Zamfara, uh, on Zamfara, Kasena border reportedly abducted about 80 persons, including children. A resident of Wenzame village, Sani Wenzame, told Daily Trust that more than 20 other persons from Kucheri village in Safi local government in Karaf community in the neighboring Kasena state were also abducted. Reacting to the abduction in Wenzame, the police of spokesperson in Zamfara, Mohammed Shewu said, the number of the victims reported was outrageous. There was tension in Lafia, the Nasser state capital, as unknown gunmen believed to be kidnappers killed a retired officer of the Nigerian Immigration Service, Jacob Agada. Reports say that Agada was found dead a few hours after he was abducted by yet to be identified gunmen who mounted roadblocks around Ombi 2. Uh, Lafia on Thursday night and whisked away to an unknown location. The deceased was returning to his home at about 9 p.m. when the hoodlums kidnapped him and later dumped his lifeless body in an area on Friday morning. A family source, while lamenting the insecurity in the area, urged the relevant authorities to, as a matter of urgency, intervene to safeguard the lives and properties of residents there. The police is yet to issue a statement on the matter. Ahead of rainy season, residents and commuters at Tiga and Rurum town of uh, Kano and Bebeji local government area, Rano rather, Rano uh, look and Bebeji local government areas in Kano state are lamenting over non repair of cut off road due to heavy floods that ravaged farmlands and rendered roads hardly accessible last year. Salim Umar Ibrahim visits the areas and files in this report. Ahmad Abdurrahman, alongside their schoolmates, are children of school age within the age bracket of 15 years. They travel from Rurum Town to Government Technical College, GTC Tiga, in search of Western education. For these young pupils, their only challenge is no less than a dilapidated and abandoned road they play every day while going and coming back from school. We are facing problems with this road while going to school. Sometimes we stumble on our bicycles and even break our legs or arms. When the rainy season commences, we have to stop going to school because we can't pass across. Six months ago, 
This road that connects Rurum and Tiga towns was affected by heavy flood, which washed away hectares of farmlands belonging to residents of these areas. While the incident subjected the people to extreme hardship, they are now entertaining fears that in few months another rainy season will set in and nothing has been done to fix their problem. Once rain drops now, we can't access this road due to the slippery nature of the place. We don't have roads. Since the first rainy season, this place breaks away. We were then using canoes. We need serious repairs. In Despite the rocky surface, this bridge is on the verge of collapse as its basement has been eaten up due to heavy water force passing through. It is now partially sitting on a rocky surface with the roads holding it all broken away and commuters are still using it. We need serious repairs in this place. All the other routes also have been affected by the water. Look at how water destroys the place, but nothing has been done so far. Tiga, Dirmawa, Boyskota, Sarkin Koji, Rurum, Sabuar Kaura, Ruan Kenya, Gidan Samia, Doka, Dargai, Rantan, Sata, Pani Sau are among few communities who use this route. It serves as the only route used to convey business activities, among others. This rocky place was not excavated by humans, but rather by heavy water. Heavy duty trucks, vehicles and drivers were not excluded in this as they shared the plight. Look at how my truck got stuck due to bad road. The water has completely damaged the place. Before, we used canoes to convey people across but now the water subsides. We now have to push them up. The residents and commuters are still suffering the trauma of the previous devastation as another rainy season sets in. Salim Umar Ibrahim reporting. And now to Bios Estate where two dead bodies have so far been recovered. From the scene of Thursday's boat accident along Okoroma River in Nimbe local government area of the state, a cargo boat MV Tari conveying passengers and goods from Yenogwa to Brass, a local government area capsized in the middle of Okoroma River and drowned those on board. The local driver, divers and rescue team from the Maritime Union workers, however, rescued some of the passengers alive while others died. Goods are said to be worth millions of naira were all also lost during the boat accident. The chairman of the Maritime Union workers in Bios State, Ipigansa Ogoniba, told Daily Trust on Friday that the rescue team has so far discovered two dead bodies, adding that the full details of the casualty figure will be available on Saturday, when some of the drowned passengers will start floating. And police spokesman in Bowser State, Asini Mboswat, who confirmed the boat accident, said the number of casualties is yet to be ascertained, as divers are still on a rescue mission. Reactions continue to trail the announcement of the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, that the federal government will utilize a World Bank grant of $800 million as a palliative as he ahead of the total removal of petrol subsidy in June. Abuja residents and pundits differ on how the intervention will cushion the economic challenges that will come with the total removal of the subsidy. The report. Government has long been arguing that fuel subsidy as it is being implemented in Nigeria is not viable but cannot be sustained. But government's plan to disperse $800 million grant gotten from the World Bank to the poor and vulnerable people is what is surprising to many. Some persons believe the money should be used for capital projects that will benefit all Nigerians and not just palliative for those captured in the social investment program register. We have many capital projects in this country now, so they can use this to eat for it. So that all the, all the citizens will see what they are doing about the money. That is all. 
You know, in Nigeria, the problem we have is because of the lack of trust the populace has on the government. So even when a genuine plan is, you know, you know, is there to benefit the people, you discover that people are not uh, too sure whether the government will deliver. It is possible for the money to be shared to the poverty so that those Nigeria people that can afford to buy food and buy many things, without sharing the money to be poverty, we cannot afford to buy anything because many things are expected, even rice, many things in the market are expected. Andrew Friday, however, holds a different view that if the money is spent on capital projects, it might perhaps be a conduit for siphoning the fund by certain individuals. Well, I felt they should give it to vulnerable Nigerians or the poor who are the needy, or use it for those who, who are in need, maybe in payment of their school fees or those who are not feed and all that. Dr. Tarifa Abraham is an economist. He said the gesture from the federal government will go a long way to cushion the effect of the removal of subsidy when eventually implemented. He, however, speaks of the best way of handling the World Bank grant. Government cannot keep providing jobs, rather, but government can make it attractive for people to take off, to take up um, private investment so that they will help complement what government is doing. So generally, it's about addressing the cost of infrastructure if they are not sharing the, the if the $800 million, million is not to be shared, address electricity costs, address transport costs, address um, the challenge of poor internet data, because these are the things Nigerians spend money on. How the $800 million palliative paid to the poor for cushion the effect of fuel subsidy removal in June this year could only be imagined. You're watching Trust TV News Update coming up shortly. We'll take a look at why Yorubas no longer bury their dead at home. Details of this story and more after the break. Do stay with us. Now, as part of efforts to support Africa's goal of strengthening... Now, looking at the activity chart, as you can see right here, a total volume of more than 30... Treated a Boko Haram crisis that at that time was restricted to Yobe. How secure that day? You can see security men with blood. This is the road leading up to the... For Libya, if you look at England squad, you are looking at EPL, you are looking at their names. You are not looking at... Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is the news update on Trust TV. A recap of our top stories. We told you that gunmen killed 34 people in Benue State internally displaced persons camp. And a flood prone community in Kendal cries out for help ahead of rainy season. Moving on to other news, clerics have asked the Christian faithful to put their trust in God and make sacrifices for Nigeria as they celebrate Easter. They made the call while preaching to their congregations on Good Friday. North Samson has more. Good Friday is the day in which Christians and Catholic churches commemorate the crucifixion and death of Jesus Christ, 
while Easter is a celebration of Christ's resurrection from the tomb. Good Friday is a day in which churches commemorate everything from his condemnation to his passion. The Good Friday is very important to Christ, Christian faith because is because Jesus died because of our sin. That is why it's very important for us. The importance of Good Friday to the Christian faithfuls cannot be overemphasized. It is a day set aside for the remembrance and the death of Jesus Christ. I'm calling on all faithfuls to use this day to pray for the country and to abide by the doctrine concerning the religion. The clerics also used the opportunity to explain the reasons why some people do not eat meat on this day and the significance of the tradition. You know, sometimes we, 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 we fast. That is why we take it that way. And as if we, if we do that, we respect the death of Jesus Christ. People don't eat meat to commemorate this special day, while some even go a long way not to eat at all, to beg for God's forgiveness and steadfast in prayers. I'm urging faithfuls to be God-fearing and be kind at all times. Some Christian faithfuls say they will not allow the economic situation affect their celebration this year, as he, Jesus Christ, is the reason for the season. Economic situation has nothing to do with us as believers. Christ has made everything for us. Everything is there, sufficient. That is what the Bible says. He said he has made everything. So there is nothing uh, the economy has to do with us. We are trusting God and by way of trusting him and walking in his ways, today we are fulfilled. Even with the economic situation, you cannot see a believer going about begging. I won't say it affected us that much, but we can't get what we used to get like before. We should give glory to God at any time we find ourselves in any type of condition. People want to celebrate by merriments and other things, but because we believe in Christ, he has already told us that all these things will happen. So even as believers, we are very, very prepared that situations like this will come. So whosoever believes in Christ, no matter how the economic situation and the condition, you will not give up. Christians believe that through his death and resurrection, Jesus Christ opened the way for humanity to be reconciled with God and receive eternal life. No, something. Trust TV News, Abuja. It is still the month of Ramadan and the presidential candidate of the new Niger People's Party, NNPP Ravio Konkwusu, has urged Muslims to be faithful, prayerful for Nigeria's progress throughout the month of Ramadan. Konkwusu also enjoined them to be generous and assist the less privileged. mosque and uh, I'm so happy with what I have seen and uh, I'm also happy with the prayers the Imam and all other people offered to the country and my humble self and uh, I pray to Almighty God to continue to protect uh, this country and bring peace and uh, bring uh, development and of course uh, bring peace Still in Ramadan, Chief Imam Nasrat Mosque in Abuja, Sharafuddin Abdusalam, says wealthy individuals and the government must spend their God given wealth to reduce extreme poverty and assist the less privileged, especially in this holy month. The man speaks in an interview with Trust TV. Take a look. Destitute and beggars are a common sight at religious gatherings like during Friday prayers, but their numbers increase during the month of Ramadan, perhaps because almsgiving is highly recommended in the month. Chief Imam of Nasfas, Moks Sharafadim Abdusalam, however, explained that Islam frowns at begging, saying it downgrades one's integrity. Let me say this very clearly. Islam discourages begging. Begging is not all that Islamic except when it's highly necessary. Highly necessary. So Rasulullah sallallahu discourages. La Sheun Amar Rumina Soa, nothing is as bitter, as disgraceful as begging. But sometimes you have to beg for one reason or the other. The importance of giving our sadaka is for us to get more return from Allah. When uh, during the month of Ramadan, if you give mom, if you give out, you get more. Anything you pray for, Allah will accept it. It's a month of mercy, month of uh, forgiveness. Some female beggars who regularly come to the mosque said they come from another state. 
because of the hardship they face, adding that they always get soccer during the early month. Some of us come from another state. We normally do this every Ramadan period as a result of the hardship. Kidnapping has made us what we are today. We really want to appreciate the kind gestures being shown to us by the Muslims, Ummah. And may Allah continue to accept our ibadah. We are suffering and cannot afford to feed ourselves and the family because our husbands have been killed as a result of banditry. We are calling on well-to-do individuals to help us and our children. Chief Imam advised Muslim Ummah to give arms to the needy such that he or she could be able to empower another needy for the following year. Kabir Lawal, Trust TV News, Abuja. Now, the culture of burying corpses at home was a popular practice in Yoruba land since time immemorial. But the advent of both Christianity and Islam has changed the culture, and most people now prefer to bury their late relatives at the cemetery. Hamid Oyegbade files this report as put together in our studio. In the typical family compounds in Yoruba land, graves are a common sight in many houses. Family members were comfortable seeing the graves of the departed, especially to reminiscize the memory of their lifetime. Some even go to the extent of praying on the graves, believing that the dead has power to help them overcome problems. But this culture is no longer popular as both Christianity and Islam frown on the tradition and encourage burying corpses at the cemetery. Now, the, the idea of burying people at the uh, at the designated graveyard is a product or the consequence of religion, particularly Christianity. The advent of Christianity, which brought about Western culture into Nigeria, brought also incorporated the practice that look the man who is dead is dead. And for the Bible says that a man is dead, is given to a man to die once, and after that judgment. So that is no basis keeping a person at home. So it's better you enter the person at the graveyard where as where such a religious organization has designed for them and this practice is common among the orthodox of the anglican the methodist and so on based on the tradition of the verse salam that goes to us do not make your homes or houses as graveyards that is whenever you want to bury your dead ones oh you muslims bury them at the grave yards. That is the tradition of the first time. Most companions that died during the lifetime of the first time that died in Medina, they were buried at their grave yard, which is Al Baqi. Even before the inception of the Prophet Sallallahu the Christians are encouraged to bury their corpse in the cemetery. Even in, in this our town we can we can we, we, we can see many cemeteries belong to the Christian. That means since the since the session of the day, the issue of the religion, the religion I encourage that we bury at the cemetery. So we use this medium to encourage the Muslims to follow that sunnah. Meanwhile, as the culture of burying corpses at home is fading away, there are concerns over the actions of criminals that exhume dead bodies at the cemetery for ritual purposes. Away from Nigeria, dozens took to the front of the Moroccan parliament in Rabat on Friday to show their support for the Palestinians. It comes as global criticism and concern mounted Wednesday after Israeli police clashed with Palestinians inside Islam's third holiest site, Al-Aqsa, in Jerusalem. The later situation has sparked a military exchange of rockets and airstrikes between Israel and Palestine with fears of further escalation after Israeli defense force hit Hamas targets in Lebanon. In a statement on Friday, the Israel Defense Forces said that Israel would not allow the Hamas terrorist organization to operate from within Lebanon and hold the state of Lebanon responsible for every directed fire emanating from the territory. Early on Wednesday, um, the police in Rio Jared stormed the prayer hall to Al-Aqsa Mosque before dawn, aiming to dislodge law-breaking youths and mask agitators. They said they had barricaded themselves inside. A barrage of rocks and fireworks made the offices. Police video showed and more than 350 people were arrested. 
In sports, two goals, one in each half, steered nine-time African champions Nigeria past Haiti's senior women national team in an international friendly in Italia, Turkey on Friday. Returnee mask woman Aziza Toshwala had already seen, seared her simple tap in disallowed in the 22nd minute and fellow Spain-based forward Rashida Ajibade also show her short miss by the whiskers. Esther Okoropo caught the Haitian at the fence completely off guard with a free kick from the right that slipped past the goalkeeper in the 40th minute. Haiti, who are also heading to the FIFA Women's World Cup finals in Australia and New Zealand this summer, came back from the dressing room looking to take the fight to the Super Falcons, but goalkeeper Chiamaka Nadozie, Tosin, Demi and Captain Onomebi warded off their incursions. Two minutes before the hour mark, Oshwala jabbed in from close range to make it two for the Falcons in the process, registering the first goal for the team since scoring in the Turkish women's tournament defeat of Equatorial Guinea two years earlier. Next up for the African heavyweight is a clash with World Cup co-host New Zealand, also in Italia on Tuesday evening. And with that, we have come to the end of the news update at this hour. For more, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Martia Umar. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.